Peculiarities of Tumor Cell Metabolism for Cancer Treatment In tumor cells, ketolysis via succinyl CoA, 3-oxoacid CoA transferase, SCOT, and acetyl CoA acetyl transferase 1, ACAT1, is a major source of mitochondrial acetyl CoA. Active ACAT1 tetramers stabilize by tyrosine phosphorylation, which facilitates the SCOT reaction and ketolysis. Tyrosine phosphorylation of pyruvate kinase PKM2 has the opposite effect, stabilizing inactive dimers, while pyruvate dehydrogenase, PDH, which is already inhibited by phosphorylation, is acetylated by ACAT1 and is doubly locked. This closes the glycolytic supply of acetyl CoA. In addition, since tumor cells must synthesize fatty acids to create new membranes, they automatically turn off the degradation of fatty acids into acetyl CoA, via the malonyl CoA break for the fatty acid carnitol transporter. Thus, inhibiting SCOT the specific ketolytic enzyme and ACAT1 should hold back tumor progression. However, tumor cells are still able to take up external acetate and convert it into acetyl CoA in their cytosol via an acetyl CoA synthetase, which feeds the lipogenic pathway. Additionally, Inhibiting this enzyme would make it difficult for tumor cells to form new lipid membrane and survive. 1. A possible reset of the metabolic rewiring mechanism in cancer. Tumor cells avidly consume glucose, but two bottlenecks at pyruvate kinase M2, PKM2, and pyruvate dehydrogenase, PDH, cut the entry in oxidative metabolism. This is similar to the process that occurs if a phosphorylation inhibiting these enzymes does not reverse while switching from neoglucogenesis to glycolysis. If one triggers neoglucogenesis through a period of fasting, in which these phosphorylations normally occur, one may try to reset the system at the interruption of the fasting period in the hope that the phosphatases will correct the anomaly, which maintains them in the off configuration. This switching mechanism involving the role of calcium, a PDE, and a phosphatase such as calcineurin, was discussed earlier in the paper. During the fasting period, one should accept complements that preserve calcium stores and the enzymes capable of resetting the system. On the other hand, fasting forms ketone bodies that feed the tumor, researchers have indicated that these fasting ketones are not as bad as are those from high-fat ketogenic diets. The incorporation of complements such as green tea and epigallocatechin-1-2 during the fasting period would inhibit MCT2-4 transporters and the ketone influx while favoring the ketone signaling action transmitted by HCA2 receptors, which is helpful. Moreover, DHA and EPA would limit the ketone contribution to the lipogenic pathway. At the end of a long fasting period, one observes some favorable cases, they might result from a successful reset removing the abnormal phosphorylation blocking the enzymes PK, M2 and PDH. 2. Cutting the ketone influx In Figure 1, researchers recall the inhibition of both the glycolytic and fatty acid sources of mitochondrial acetyl CoA indicated by PK and PDH interruptions on the glycolytic entry, while a single interruption by malonyl CoA cuts the fatty acid source of acetyl CoA since the tumor must synthesize its fatty acids to create new membranes. Hence, the ketolysis of BHB becomes a major acetyl CoA supply, promoting, for example, the growth of breast tumors. Adipocytes form BHB, which enters tumor cells through MCT2 transporters 3-4. Figure 1. Ketolytic Dependent Tumor Cells Inhibitions by phosphorylation, of pyruvate kinase PKM2 and pyruvate dehydrogenase PDH, cut the glycolytic supply of acetyl CoA to mitochondria, lactic acid release occurs through monocarboxylic acid transporter, MCT, monocarboxylate transporters. Moreover, an acetylation of PDH by ACAT1 thiolase further increases the inhibition of PDH. Since tumors must synthesize fatty acid to create new membranes, this automatically turns off the fatty acid mitochondrial carnitol transporter and the fatty acid supply of acetyl CoA. The carnitol transporter is inhibited by malonyl CoA, the product of acetyl CoA carboxylase, ACC, starting the lipogenic pathway in the cytosol. Hence, ketone bodies and beta-hydroxybutyrate, BHB, become an essential source of acetyl CoA in tumors, 
Vias got the specific ketolytic enzyme and ACAT1. Then, citrate exits the mitochondria and feeds lipogenesis via ADP citrate lyase, ACL, and acetyl CoA carboxylase, ACC. By blocking the MCT transporters with indicated compounds, one would affect the lactate release, the influx of beta hydroxybutyrate, BHB, and the supply of acetoacetate to Scott. Researchers indicate possible inhibitors for SCOT, lithostat or other citrophores, ferrichrome, phycocyanin, febrifugin, or even melatonin. As for Act 1, butanolides, vitamin C and others are indicated, this should starve the tumor. Researchers suggest inhibiting the citrate condensation and supply to the lipogenic pathway using lipoacid and hydroxycitrate, as indicated. Moreover, Alicina would cut the direct conversion of acetate into acetyl-CoA in the cytosol. An essential key is that AMP kinase will inhibit ACC, which merits stimulation by acetogenin, and to inhibit AMP deaminase with docosahexanoic acid, DHA, or Galaga officinalis, or metformin. By inhibiting the entry of BHB, one also stops the stimulation of NFKB-mediated transcription, a hallmark of cancer and cancels the inhibition of histone deacetylase, HDAC, caused by BHB. Upstream of ketolysis, one may use octreotide, a somatostatin analog, to decrease the ketogenic supply. There is, however, a paradox, since the signaling action of extracellular BHB on HCA2, a GI-coupled receptor, is to preserve, it inhibits NFKB transcription. A prostaglandin messenger is involved, it can be strengthened with andrographolite. Niacin is another agonist for HCA2, which may help when using octreotide for decreasing ketogenesis. Green arrows, HCA2 signaling. Red arrows, BHB influx through MCT and effects. One should also control the BHB influx. Indeed, once in the cell, BHB has multiple effects, first, it feeds the Scott pathway, second, it goes to the nucleus where it inhibits HDAC, favoring the acetylation of HIST1s, which induces the expression of fetal genes. A third effect of intracellular BHB is the activation of NFKB-mediated transcription of inflammatory cytokines IL-1B. Indeed, intracellular BHB induces phosphorylation of IKB, liberating the NFKB transcription factor, which moves to the nucleus. Thus, if one inhibits the influx of BHB with compounds such as syringopine or syrosingopine from Rao Wolfia 4 or others such as K or Cetin or epigallocatechin 1 2 tumor cells will starve, since ketolysis should decline, particularly if associated with Scott and ACAT1 inhibitors. In parallel, the decrease in intracellular BHB stops the inhibition over HDAC, which will deacetylate HIST1s, silencing fetal genes and elicit a transition to adult genes. Hydroxamic acid HDAC derivatives, which display anti-cancer effects, are probable Scott inhibitors, and may be able to starve the tumor. Finally, the decrease in intracellular BHB stops the stimulation of inflammatory cytokines transcription mediated by NFKB, since NFKB remains bound to ICB in the cytosol. In summation, the MCT transporter of BHB driven by Scott ACAT1 attracts this essential nutrient for tumor cells. In parallel, this elicits NFKB transcription and inflammation, whereas HDAC inhibition by BHB elicits histone acetylation and the expression of fetal genes. By inhibiting the MCT transporter of BHB and the Scott ACAT1 pathway, one starves the tumor and blocks NFKB transcription. HIST1s are deacetylated by HDAC, favoring a shift to adult genes. Moreover, extracellular BHB activates HCA2 receptor signaling as other agonists of these receptors, such as niacin. These receptors inhibit inflammation by keeping NFKB bound to ICB in the cytosol, further blocking inflammation and inflammatory macrophages, these effects would be mediated by prostaglandins. Niacin or other agonists of this receptor should decrease inflammation and NFKB-mediated transcription, as adrographolide, andrographis paniculata, 5. In conclusion, the ketone body is favorable if it stays outside the cell, acting as a signaling molecule rather than as a nutrient for the tumor. This summarizes the keto paradox and explains some opposing observations on the effects of BHB on tumor cells. 
3 cutting the succinyl coa 3 oxoacid coa transferase scott acetyl coa acetyl transferase 1 ketolytic steps our strategy is to block the ketolytic pathway particularly the specific step driven by scott and the supply of acetyl coa to lipogenesis as researchers recently attempted on an animal cancer model 6 moreover since active ACAT1 tetramers collaborate with Scott to pull in the ketolytic nutrient, researchers suggest using inhibitors of both enzymes. A typical inhibitor for Scott is acetohydroxamic acid, which was introduced by Pickert and Jenks 7. There are many hydroxamic acid derivatives in the Citrophores iron chelator family molecules, and it would be interesting to test them on Scott activity. An association with ACAT1 inhibitors, butanolides, including vitamin C, aricoline, and trimetazidin, vast aryl, discussed above would certainly be interesting to test. Four possible compounds for inhibiting succinyl CoA, 3-oxoacid CoA transferase. Lithostat acetohydroxamic acid is a typical Scott inhibitor used to treat bladder stones. Another inhibitor, pimazide 89 used to treat mental diseases, reduces cancer incidence. Several interesting compounds are highlighted in the work of Lysenti's group, who describe potential Scott inhibitors, the mitoketacine 10, through their structural and binding properties. Selecting the best and least toxic derivative for animal cancer models requires collaboration with pharmaceutical groups. We can also explore the literature for hydroxamic acid derivatives given for other pathologies, this is the case for vorinostat saha or quizinostat and tricostatin which are HDAC inhibitors 11 that display anti-cancer properties, it would be interesting to see if they inhibit Scott as lithostat. Another way to find potential Scott inhibitors comes from bacteriology. In order to survive in a hostile environment such as in stomach acid or in the bladder, the bacteria Helicobacter or Proteus use their urease to make ammonia and neutralize the acidity. Drugs such as acetohydosamic acid inhibit the urease by binding the metal, Ni, in the active center, blocking the alkalinization of urine and stone formation. Another source of compounds used to find Scott inhibitors is the pharmacology of metalloproteinase inhibitors, again, the hydroxamate derivatives that block the ZN metalloproteinases deserve to be studied in relation to Scott inhibition 12. The iron binding sidrophores of bacteria, algae, and other organisms are likely the best to explore. In our aerobic environment, Iron bioavailability is low due to its insolubility. Iron is necessary for the survival of these organisms, thus, they synthesize iron chelators to capture ferric iron. One category of these sidrophores is hydroxamate derivatives, they are potential Scott inhibitors and have clear anti-cancer properties 13. Researchers recently compared acetohydroxamic lithostat and lithothamnion from red algae lithothamnion calcarium 14 on the Lewis cancer model and confirmed observations on their anti-cancer properties 6. An interesting sidrophore is ferrichrome from lactobacillus casei, which inhibits colon cancer 15. The iron chelators desferoxamin, desferol, display antineuroblastoma effects 16, and as such they would be interesting for future leukemia treatments. Soluble seawater marine sidrophores, ferrioxamines, phytoplankton sidrophore from Rhodomonas ovalis or sidrophore from the marine bacterium ALT Eremonas luteoviolacea, alterobactin, 17 would be interesting to test using the Scott assay developed by Williamson 1819. The problem is finding the best Scott inhibitor that would reach the enzyme without being toxic. Presumably, a hydroxamate derivative originating from the biology of sidrophores or a compound related to iron metabolism would do the job. Researchers know that the normal liver never expresses the specific ketolytic enzyme Scott, only ketogenesis takes place in liver. Is this related to the recycling of the heme, iron recovery, and biliverdin, bilirubin metabolism in the liver? During bacteria or parasite infections, the microorganisms try to rob our iron with their sidrophores, and proteins of our immune system with better affinity for iron compete with bacterial sidrophores. A colleague pointed out that melatonin has reactive groups similar to acetohyroxamic acid. Researchers also notice that febrifugin from dicofebrifuga used in Chinese medicine and its derivative halofuginone 20 have similar reactive radicals, they both have anti-cancer effects, affinity for iron and might inhibit Scott. 
5 compounds affecting acetyl CoA acetyl transferase 1. ACAT1 activity in association with Scott secures the vital ketolytic supply to tumor cells by pulling in the influx of BHB. The antifouling butanolide, or vitamin C, or carikins, and strigal from smoke, would inhibit ACAT1. Ericoline from Erica catechu is an ACT1 inhibitor, but it might have oral carcinogenic effects. Other ACAT1 inhibitors, Vastarol, could be tested in this context in association with Scott inhibitors. The acetogenin from Anons are particularly interesting, since they have a furin ring. As butanolide, they might inhibit ACAT1 and inhibit AMP deaminase, which stimulates AMP kinase that cuts the lipogenic supply. Fungal sidrophores from Felinus lintus or Felinus bumae E2122 are identified, and might influence SCO tanned ACAT1. Inoscovin has a furin ring, which likely affects ACAT1. Six compounds acting downstream of succinyl CoA, 3 oxoacid coatransferase, Scott, acetyl CoA acetyl transferase 1. In earlier works researchers showed that lipoacid and hydroxycitrate from Garcinia were able to limit the citrate efflux from mitochondria and inhibit ADP citrate lyase, ACL, in the cytosol, which cuts the lipogenic supply. These effects are strengthened if one uses alicina or orotic acid to block the direct incorporation of external acetate via acetyl-CoA synthetase. Moreover, one can impair the synthesis of lipid membranes with DHA through the inhibition of AMP deaminase, which leaves more AMP to stimulate AMP kinase. This then inhibits ACC, at the start of the lipogenic pathway. One can reinforce these effects by decreasing the synthesis of cholesterides using statins that are difficult to handle, or bergamotine 23. An interesting report 24 shows that tumors can use the glutamine entry in the citric acid cycle to form citrate and feed the lipid synthesis pathway. The role of isocitrate dehydrogenase, IDH2, is essential in this process. IDH2 mediates a reductive carboxylation to facilitate the utilization of glutamine through alpha-ketoglutarate to citrate reversible steps of the Krebs cycle and feed the citrate supply to lipid synthesis. The long-term induction of the oncogene KRAS upregulates IDH2, this facilitates glutamine utilization for lipid synthesis during malignant transformation. There is certainly a great variability among tumors and their metabolic adaptations. The presentation given in this research did not consider the different tumor situations or the magnitude of the glycolytic bottlenecks, or the degree of the ketone dependency.